So they age it in bourbon barrels. I mean, so it's too bad. I think it's only 10.1%. Hi everyone, welcome back to Portland, Maine. This is day five here in partnership with Visit Maine. And today I have a short but incredible day ahead of me. I'm headed first to the Portland Headlight, which is Maine's oldest lighthouse. After that, I have to go to two different stops before I head to the airport. It's really been a nice few days here in Maine. People are extremely friendly. The food is amazing and the craft beer, if you like beer, you have to make a trip out here because there's 22 craft breweries in Portland alone. Right outside of it, I think it's total 98 in the state of Maine, so huge craft beer scene. As you know from the other videos, my friends at Sunglass Warehouse sent me a pair of sunglasses per day. These are today's. What do you guys think? If you like them, you can check it out in the link below. Now let's go to the Portland Headlight. So I just got here in Cape Elizabeth to the Portland Headlight. And like I said before, this is the oldest lighthouse in Maine. It was built under the directive of George Washington in 1787 and was completed in 1791. So if you want more information about the history of the lighthouse, check out the museum. And remember, this is something very easy. I think everybody needs to visit this lighthouse. It's one of the most important landmarks and sites in the state because it is the oldest lighthouse. So I'm here with Nate, he is the founder of Zutility. So tell me, what is Zutility? Uh, Zutility is really fun. It's animal shaped multi-tools. We make knives, uh, bottle openers, pretty much anything we can do with lasers. We're going over our shop, I'm gonna show you around. Uh, you're gonna see some of our products, our machines, and how we make everything. Awesome, I can't wait to test some of these things. Yeah, they're pretty fun. Started out with Pocket Monkey. This is a 12-in-1 multi-tool the size of a credit card. It's got a bottle opener, uh, a couple different screwdrivers, one that's even uh, good on eyeglass screws, a letter opener, hex wrenches, even an orange peeler along the bottom here. A lot of things that you'd expect in a multi-tool and then a whole bunch that you've never seen before and now you can carry it in your wallet. PSA compliant, and a whole bunch of bottle openers. They are these guys right here. They used our, our laser cutters that we... Hitchhog is a, is a credit card sized comb. So nine tools right here? Yeah. Bottle opener, Look at this. Uh, chip clip. Do you have any, like a tutorial video? <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> I need to like... So it starts, it starts back here. So we have sheet metal. This is how they start the production, right? So you get the sheet. Uh, this is cut out here. We get them in here, put them on the laser cutter, and then uh, you can see we cut all these pieces out of it. We take all of them once they've been cut, and we have to tumble them to, to, to break the edges so that they're not so, uh, so rough. It starts off with the sheet metal right here. And then it goes inside there, where it's cut by lasers, right? Yeah, this is a laser cutter. Laser cutter. These are before they get engraved, and over here they're engraved. Oh, that's nice. The open beer season has over 100 bottle openers in the series. States and animals, as well as ponds. A Florida one? This is the original product, the Pocket Monkey. I really like those products at Utility. Nate is doing an awesome job. Everything they make is American made. So while in Portland, you can literally go to a brewery every single day. You know, this is the last few hours here, so we're going to one more brewery. It's called Foul Mouth Brewery. It's in South Portland. I'm gonna have lunch there, try some of their beers, and get ready for the flight. So I'm here with Craig, the owner of Foul Mouth Brewery. And how'd you come up with that name, Foul Mouth? Uh, this whole region was founded as the city of Falmouth before it split into Portland and South Portland and Falmouth, Yarmouth, etc. Oh, because I was um, thinking Falmouth. Well, and that's sort of the joke, right? So okay. it's like the, the region's <laughs> history as Falmouth, Maine, uh, and this whole area coupled with salty sailor speak. Uh, we're gonna try some beers. We have six of our own brews on tap here. We got some killer food and some killer beers. Uh, so this is the brewery side. This is where we make all the beer. We're a seven barrel brew pub. So we brew seven barrel batches of beer at a time. 
That's uh, about 220 gallons of beer. Um, and as a brew pub, we go, so we have four of these conical fermenters and seven of those flat bottom tanks on the other side, and we serve right out of those tanks. We, as a pub, don't have a flagship beer. You're not always gonna get the same pale ale every time you come in here. So they have six beers on tap today. Uh, it's a mix. He's gonna explain to us right now. All right. So we have six beers lined up here. Where do I start? I generally say start at the beginning. So that's the garbage pale ale. It's an American pale. Um, and the idea behind that beer is we've brewed three different versions of the garbage pale ale now. Every time we brew it, it's just a way to use up like the leftover bits of hops from other batches. So it's very smooth. Thank nice. you. Yeah. yeah. What's next? That is the coconut cream stout. Coconut cream stout. Yeah. So it's an American style stout with some lactose sugar, so it gives it the real creaminess. A whole bunch of plate goats, uh, and then we age it on coconut that we toast right here. Oh wow. That. That's delicious. Thank you. Um, Bar de Garde. So what is Rubard de Garde? Uh, so a uh, beer de Garde is a French style farmhouse ale. It, uh, beer de Garde means like the beer for aging. Uh, mm. So it's a maltier, stronger version of a saison. Feels um, like a German wheat. Am I wrong? Uh, no, it's well, we we use a Belgian style Pilsner malt as the base of that. Okay. You get the blue balls. <laughs> He gave me blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a Belgian dark strong, which is like the quadruple style of Belgian ales. Um, it's 11% alcohol. Mm. And oh, it's nice. Blueberry. Yeah. It really tasty. And what's the percentage on this one? 11. 11? 11. Wow, yeah. so this is strong beer. Yeah, very strong beer. Four ounces is funny. <laughs> got two left. What are our last two? There are two different IPAs. So the lighter colored one there is called Mango Floss. Okay. Uh, it's named after a punk band that our other brewer used to be in. Mango uh, <laughs> And it is an IPA aged on mangoes. Ooh, I love that little fruity taste. Yeah, there's a bunch of really, I mean, the hops that we're using are a couple of interesting varietals of hops. And the last one? And that is Malcontent. So that's 8.8% .8 double IPA. Malcontent. Yeah. Uh, wow. so it's the West Coast style of uh, IPAs, it's towards the you know bitter side, really. Mm. Like, I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. What do we have here? Oh, so we have the best fish sandwich that I've ever eaten. Uh, the best ever. Th it really is the best fish sandwich I've ever eaten. Uh, totally, to we we call it the fish au filet. It takes its name because it's very much inspired by the classic junk food fish sandwich. Yeah, it's, it's so good. I'm stealing one of them, I hope you don't mind. So hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, this sandwich is incredible. I'm... So two sides of tartar sauce. Yeah, we make that cornerstone tartar sauce in house. It's so good. My favorite beer was the Malcolm 10 double IPA. It's fantastic. And then the other one was a stout, the coconut cream stout. Coconut cream stout so tasty. Yeah. Dude, keep it back for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back, don't worry. Yeah, we'll keep making it, don't worry. Uh, yeah, please, please. <laughs> Right. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. So that was Foul Mouth Brewery. That was amazing. That fish sandwich out of control. The double IPA and that coconut stout. You have to come here. It's right here in South Portland. Quick 10 minute drive over the bridge. Right now I have a wicked surprise for you guys. I'm going to Allagash Brewery. One of the biggest and best known breweries in Maine. They're known all around the country and they have Belgian type of beer. So Belgian like ale, that's the style they produce. Let's go there right now. Yeah, right? Welcome to Allagash Brewing Company. Thank you. Mike's gonna give me a tour of Allagash Brewery, famous for their Belgian style beers. Uh, we're gonna start by giving you a beer. And then uh, we'll kind of go from there, check things out. Let's go. Okay, let's do it. Let's get you started with the Allagash Black. That's our Belgian stout. We're pretty much the first to make a Belgian stout. It didn't exist. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, this is a 30 barrel brew system. Uh, this is the brew system we came up with in 2006. We thought it would last us forever. And craft beer sort of exploded in this country. So we had to expand over that way and build a whole new 70 barrel system. So that new 70 barrel system, that's where we brew all of our year-round stuff, 
Saison, black, white, hoppy table beer. It's all done over there. But on this system here, we do more specialized beers, limited release beers. We also do our wild beers here. So I don't know if you've heard of wild beers, sour, funky, tart. Uh, that's where we brew most of these. And then right up top, we're gonna have a CO2 blow-off valve. It's gonna come down through this bucket. You can see right down here in the bucket at the end of the pipe, all these bubbles coming out, that's CO2 coming out of the uh, fermentation vessel. So this is our Curio uh, barrel aging room. Basically what we do here, we take our Belgian triple, the Belgian golden strong ale. We're gonna age it in these Jim Beam bourbon barrels. So the one thing you can't miss here is the wild bear room. The magic happens in this room right here. So we're gonna go through for a wild bear room. Yes, yes. Woo! <sighs> Little breath. So breath stands for Britannomyces. Uh, Britannomyces is a wild beast strain. And that's what's gonna give it that funky. It's like fruity? Fruity, funky, kind of sour, tart flavor. So we're gonna try one of their most famous beers, the Allagash White. Everybody's been telling me I have to eat this little lobster roll. Unfortunately, there's no food here, but, huh. It's one of those beers that just pairs well with everything you throw at it. So this is the Allagash White, right here. Looks very cloudy. Very nice. We pour a few in succession, or be left of the head, but I kind of like to get the, the nice frothy head on there. What's right. the about? Right here, uh, this is our flight for today. It changes every week, two weeks, sometimes every couple days. But uh, what we've got right now, we've got our house beer. So this is a beer that's only available here at the brewery. It was originally brewed for the employees to drink right here at the brewery after long shifts. Uh, but it's a Belgian ale, really lightly hopped. We use little uh, Nelson Sauvin hops in there. Um, super light. Super light, four and a half percent, super easy to drink. Right next to that, we have Hoppy Table Beer. So, same sort of style, it's a potter's beer. Uh, good table beer. This one is a little hoppier. It's got a blend of four hops. Um, dry hop with Tonnet and Azaka. So it's kind of like the IPA antidote, almost. Okay. It's not going to be bitter, it's not going to slap you in the face with hops. It's just there to uh, accentuate the, the house yeast. So what's next? The next one down is Little Brett. Little Brett is sort of our introductory wild or sour beer. It's not all that sour, it's just a little bit uh, sort of funky and fruity. And then right next to that, uh, we have the classic Allagash Black. Uh, it's a Belgian stout. And this style didn't really exist as a style uh, when we came up with the idea. And it's really taken off for us. A lot of people dig it. It's really low alcohol as stouts go, 7.5%. I mean, I don't know what it is about stouts. I'm like, I'm drinking strawberry. Strawberry, yeah. Why? I mean, it smells like strawberry. I'll be back. Yep. Belgian quad, aged in bourbon barrels. And then we take that beer and we put it over strawberries in stainless tanks with wild juice. Alright, so this is St. Klippenstein. So they age it in bourbon barrels. I mean, if you've had bourbon, you know how strong this should be. Nah, it's not bad. This one isn't actually too bad. I think it's only 10.1%. This is the strongest beer. <laughs> That was Allagash Brewery, the last stop on my trip to Maine. This has been one of the best trips of my life. I gotta thank you, visit Maine. It's been so nice. Um. Ooh, baby, on the track, I'm going room, room. Try and catch me when I pull up in a zoom, zoom. Oh, no, nah. please don't make that call. We don't want no call, staying ready for the cause. Ooh, baby, on the track, I'm going room. I have a 20 minute connection, actually not really because I'm already boarding, so let's see if I made it. Get a rubber on my chest now, first, no you're not the first one, they don't told me I'm the worst one, yeah, always the pedal to the floor, yeah I'm Martin Senna, and I don't know what's in my trunk, I'm always front and center, try to Rory down the coast, yeah.
rocking my new rope, yeah Always on the road and I don't need no sweater 